You betcha. Good morning. This is Arlene Francis, and everybody seems happy this morning. <laughs> the headline says, Sparky voted best in American League, and the picture caption reads, I am a screaming maniac right now. Well, here we are all together. You want to scream a little for us, Sparky, so we can... Uh. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, there's an explosion at Grand Central Station we didn't know we were going to get. Anyway, that's a little tribute to the um, screaming maniac, my guest roster. Um, uh, Sparky Lyle is, uh, as everybody knows, a very important member of the winning team, the Yankees, who rescued the city's self-image in the nick of time, put us all back where we belong, on the top. Hooray! And Keith Morris of Sports Illustrated Magazine and Don Crickey of WOR. I've had to keep my immediate Sparky Lyle cheering section down to two for reasons of space limitations. Around the microphone, that is. There's a very goodly crowd here collected just beyond the velvet ropes. Uh, a crowd curious to get a good look at this living legend. Oh. And we're all very ecstatic that we got a look at him at all this morning after what happened to him. <laughs> Uh, yesterday. In fact, I didn't think you were going to get here, Sparky. I was trying to make up things in my head that I'd be able to say about you, and I kept reading everything that was in the paper this morning. Well, I was, I was trying to get here. I, got, I left him plenty of time, but the traffic was just a little bit bad, and uh, not to mention my bad head this morning. Yes. <laughs> you, look, you look better than you do in the pictures when you get the wad of tobacco, though. Well, I don't feel better right now. <laughs> They're celebrating they'll get you. Okay. Yeah, did you celebrate very late? Uh, yeah, pretty late. About a half hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> you just fell into the car and, and they drove you here, huh? Yeah. Who drove you here? Keith? No, Morris? No, no I, I met him at uh, Time of Life Building. We can run, run right over. You didn't drive yourself? Yeah. After such a heavy night? Well, my hands were all right. Always in control. <laughs> That's sparky. Well, now, which uh, Don or, or Keith, do you want to... Um, uh, Tell us a little bit about this terrific award, this Cy Young Award. It's the first time a, a relief pitcher in the American League has yeah. ever got one. Yeah. I think Mike Marshall got it once for the Dodgers, but of all the years they've given it out, uh, Sparky's the first relief pitcher in the American League's history to get it. It's, it's the great award for pitcher in baseball. Yeah. And well-deserved. He had a great, great year. Yeah, I think it's very well deserved because uh, Sparky has been, you know, doing so much for the New York Yankees ever since he came down from the Red Sox. And uh, I think this was the culmination of everything that took place with the Yankees. And uh, having him receive the Cy Young, uh, he deserves it without a doubt in my book. And uh, I know that uh, relief pitchers don't always stand a chance in getting that award. So, uh, Sparky, congratulations. I know from everybody here in New York, uh, you did a tremendous job this year for that club. Thank you. Thank you very Listen, much. Listen, Keith, uh, how long did you know that Sparky had won this award? Uh, about an hour ago. No, uh, last <laughs> night I uh, heard that um, while I was at the New York Knicks game that uh, he had received the award, and uh, I thought, my, my, that's very good timing. I thought maybe Arlene Francis knew something I didn't know. <laughs> no, I, only, I only know a couple of things that all of you don't know, and that is that I have to do some commercials right now. So rest easy there for a minute, fellas. Listen, everybody, did you ever, ever find a friendly salesperson not really quite so friendly when you tried to return something? That never happens to you when you shop at Aaron's. Aaron's offers its customers a trouble-free return policy. If you get it home and you don't think it's terrific, you just take it back. They don't argue with you. They'll give you a refund. They'll exchange anything that you want. The choice is yours. And that really is something you won't find in any other designer clothing discount store. What you will find at Aaron's is a wide selection of designer labels, ultra suede dresses and skirts and, and sweaters and pocketbooks and just about anything you'd ever need with a discount of, oh, 25 to 50%. And at Aaron's, you'll find the fashions you've been waiting for at the prices you've been hoping for. Aaron's is located minutes from Manhattan at 627 Fifth Avenue in Brooklyn between 17th and 18th Streets. There is municipal parking at 14th Street and 5th Avenue. It's convenient to parkways and public transportation, open Thursdays until 9. It's closed Sundays, so shop at Aaron's, where personal courtesy and service are a 47-year-old tradition. 
Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer. All the signs say you could win up to $10,000 instantly when you play Lucky Horoscope, the latest New Jersey instant lottery game. Rub off six spots. If three match, you win that amount instantly. You could even qualify for $1,000 a week for life. Collect letters to spell star, zodiac, or birthday for other cash prizes. So Leos, Virgos, Libras, Scorpios, Sagittarians, Capricorns, get Lucky Horoscope at your New Jersey lottery agent. You may thank your lucky stars. I just want to remind you once again about Kazume, that marvelous store in Garden City, where you can really go in and just feast your eyes on the most beautiful oriental rugs you ever saw. These are really masterpieces, and they're brought from the rug capitals of Iran only by Kazumi. That means you have direct import of price savings. And Kazumi so sure of the perfect quality of these rugs, they guarantee to buy back for cash any rug at any time for the full purchase price. And if market conditions warrant it, they'll give you a profit. So you see, it's a safe investment. Kazumi's service includes continuing updated appraisals for insurance purposes of oriental rugs that you may own now. Uh, and they do expert washing. Meticulous repairs are made by native craftsmen. They'll even buy your used oriental rugs for the highest possible cash prizes, regardless of condition. So stop in at Casame at 827 Franklin Avenue in Garden City. There isn't any pressure. You'll just be given the dependable expert information that you need. K-A-Z-E-M-I, Casame, 827 Franklin Avenue in Garden City, Long Island. Now, I just want to give you a few little known facts about vitamins. This is brought to you by Letterly Laboratories and their pioneers in vitamin research. Some people think of vitamins uh, in a very general way, but each individual vitamin is different, and each one has its own special role to perform. For example, B1 helps convert starch and sugar to energy. B6 helps you make full use of protein. B12 helps build healthy red blood cells, and vitamin C is important for healthy teeth and bones. Well, unlike many other vitamins, most of B complex and C are not stored in the body in substantial reserves. And that's why more people are taking Stress Tabs 600, because Stress Tabs 600 concentrates on the vitamins the body doesn't store by providing a high potency supply of B complex and 600 milligrams of vitamin C plus vitamin E. This message has been brought to you by Letterly, makers of Stress Tab 600 and Stress Tab 600 with iron. You'll find them at your pharmacy right now. I don't expect you. Do you have to take vitamins or anything, Sparky? No. Lyle, no. no. Never have. You're just strong and healthy all the time. Good, good clean living. Good clean living, <laughs> except for last night, right? Yeah. yeah. I, um, I'm sure that. Don Crickey and Keith Morris have a lot of leading questions that uh, they want to ask you, but I do want to mention that everybody at the station has been, naturally, has been talking about you on the air all, all morning. And uh, yesterday, I think George Mead leaped out of his helicopter to contribute a word picture of your wedding day. <laughs> and before you get into any serious conversation about baseball, you didn't really go to your wedding in a fire engine. No, I uh, came from it, though. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? I don't know. All I know is I walked out of the church and there it was. Magnificent 1936 fire engine. <laughs> You're crazy about old cars, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I like them. This is my very first one, you know, that's of any value, anyhow. You know, I can't wait to get it fixed. This Take... fire engine? No, no, this, uh, Which Ma one? I got a Maxwell. A Maxwell? The kind well. Jack Benny used to drive. <laughs> <laughs> That must be, I was just going to say, and it does it, <laughs> is it holding together? Oh, yeah. yeah. Allie, do you have a whole um, a garage filled with, with these old cards? No, no. I just, I only have one. Just this one, Maxwell, that is your dearest and nearest? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, speaking of, uh, uh, Soupy told me about that, Soupy <laughs> Sales. He said that you had a lot of cars, <laughs> that you were an old car fan. Well, I'm an old car fan, but I don't, I can't afford to have as many as I'd like, you know. It, uh, I think from now on you may be able to. <laughs> uh, possibly, I don't know. <laughs> Steinbrenner being very nice to you these yeah, days? Oh, he's been very nice, very nice. <laughs> Put together a good team for me to pitch with, that's for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. Keith or Don, aren't there some things you'd like to talk to uh, Sparky Lyle about? Well, I think one of the things that uh, every Yankee fan would be interested in hearing Lock Sparky talk about is, uh, what about Thurman Munson and some of the players that talked about going someplace else next year? Well, there, uh, you know, there's been talk of, uh, you know, they want to go here, they want to go here. I, I couldn't really tell you, uh, you know, that doesn't concern me. Uh, if Thurman or whatever wants to go to 
Cleveland. Why, well, uh, you know, I'm sure George will, uh, he'll try and help him out all he can because, you know, George will do that. You know, if you ask him, uh, he tries to send you wherever you want to go. But I don't know. I, I hate to see Thurman go to Cleveland, uh, even though it's close to his home and, you know, his family and everything. I, I don't think he'd be happy there. You think he'll stay then? Well, I, as far as I'm concerned, I hope he stays. Yeah. <laughs> Keith, uh, you, Keith Morris, you've been with Sports Illustrated for so many years, you've probably met just about all the greats that there are. What strikes you most about this fellow here, this Sparky Lyle? Uh, his mustache. No, no. Uh, <laughs> that strikes no, his wife yeah. most, not you, I hope. No, uh, very true. Uh, since 1954, I've had that pleasure. And uh, I will say this, that uh, the fellow sitting opposite you, Arlene, is really one of the fine sportsmen of our time. He, He's uh, uh, just been, you know, superb as far as uh, a baseball player, and uh, he's always uh, one of the most interesting uh, guests you could ever get on a radio or television program, which uh, I think is a tribute to Sparky. Uh, Sparky, you know, your manager, Billy Martin, a uh, very interesting fellow. Uh, uh, do you think he is the type of manager that really can handle the New York Yankee club the way it is today, or is there someone else that uh, maybe could fit that role? Well, earlier this year when they talked about firing Billy or whatever, I didn't think that was a very good move because, you know, when you're in a situation like that, uh, to fire a manager and hire somebody new isn't the answer to your problems at that time. It's just, uh, you know, what happened to us this year was we finally got our thing together and uh, went out and played ball. And we still had the controversies and so on behind the scenes, but as long as you can go out there and play ball the way you're supposed to, that doesn't matter. Uh, as far as anybody else being able to handle the Yankees, uh, maybe Hitler if he was still alive. You believe that we a bunch? Well, it's we have a lot of fun. I'll put it that way. <laughs> I'm I'm sort of a, just a dumb observer of the scene. So would you explain to me? I was so riveted watching you during the World Series that the cheek got out so far that I couldn't figure out how much tobacco you held in that cheek and what does it do for you. Well, I don't know. It, uh, I've been chewing for quite a long time, and uh, just when you play? Yeah, yeah, just when I pitch. So, uh, the only thing that hurts me is I put more in the more innings I pitch. So if I go over five innings, I'm in trouble. I can't get it out sometimes. <laughs> I feel like I gotta, you know, get a crowbar or something to get it out. But don't I, be like Pete Ramos. They had a Yankee relief pitcher a few years ago. Walked off the mound during the middle of a game. Yogi Berra was the manager. Came out and Ramos walked right by him. He was doing great. But he'd swallowed his jaw and was violently <laughs> ill and had to go right, right to the locker room. So he had to take himself out of the game. It, it'll, it'll, make you, it'll make you ill, I'll tell you. I would think just a little one would make you ill. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> just a little one will. It I, gives your cheeks a nice massage, though. Well, I, I get an echo on one side now. I probably have one sagging cheek here. Do you have any solution to, to, as to how to control rowdy fans? No, uh, you know, New York fans are, uh, you know, they're, they're great fans. I, I think the greatest fans that I've been around are New York, uh, Boston, and Chicago. They're all really into their teams. And uh, I think, you know, when you get in the series or playoffs or whatever, uh, you're going to have people that throw stuff out on the field. But, uh, you know, the, I, the only thing that uh, bothers me is they try and, you know, when they start throwing batteries and, stuff like that here and like up in Boston they threw big chunks of metal and darts and stuff like that now you know players don't really mind that much because they know they're going to get heckled and so on when they're you know in the visiting towns or whatever but, but uh, that's very distracting you, yeah, isn't you, it? well you shouldn't you shouldn't try and hurt anybody that's the only thing you know throw a popcorn ball or something I don't know. but uh, the players don't really mind it that much but when you're trying to hurt them they, you know then they, they got all cause to worry you know yeah. I, mean, I don't blame them if, if I was an outfielder I think uh and playing in another stadium and they threw a battery or something, I'd walk off. I really would. Has it ever happened? No, not yet. I'm usually the best player for the other team. <laughs> they don't want to hurt me. You know, speaking of that, I've never seen Reggie run so fast in my life during his career when he got into the dugout. Yeah, to get the bat and help. Uh, most of the football players, Don, that I've seen since then want to sign him to a football contract. Uh, he did some job trying to get into that dugout from right field. Uh, it said also, I read at the New York Times that when you heard about the uh, Cy Young Award, you said there were the two greatest days of your life, the Yankees winning and the, the Cy Young Award, right. and your wife said, and how about the fact you got married this year? How did uh, you happen to leave that out? <laughs> well, I didn't have any comment on that. <laughs> I, what I, is the award? <laughs> when, when you get the award, what do you get? 
I really don't know, to tell you the truth. I've never seen one. And uh, they asked me what I was going to do with it. I said, put it in a glass case in my front in my front yard. So <laughs> I really don't know what it looks like. Uh, I don't care if it looks like uh, just a little square box. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. It, it, it means a lot to me. And, uh, you know, like I said, I haven't seen one, but <laughs> I don't care what it looks like. You know, Arlene, one reason that the Yankees and the Red Sox did so well over the years with Sparky on the team is the fact that he keeps the club very loose. And uh, he's been known to do a couple of things here and there in the locker room uh, on occasions over the years. And uh, uh, this year, Sparky, uh, if you could pick one little uh, incident, what was it that uh, you felt was one of your great contributions? Uh, Probably the toothpaste thing with Yogi. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> well, Yogi was always coming over and using my toothpaste all the time. So this one day he he come over and he saw that I had two brand new tubes of toothpaste and he says, "Let me have one." I said, "No, you're not going to have one." I said, Those, uh, "That's mine." So he says, well, "I'll get it. I'll get it." So I went and squeezed some out of it and took a syringe and put this red hot stuff that we use on our arms back in the toothpaste. <laughs> And so Yogi, you know, it was getting near it. His toothpaste was almost running out. So one day I see him come in the locker with his toothbrush, and I just got out of there. So I didn't have anything to do with this. Yogi, I didn't have anything to do with this. So he goes over, and he picks up the toothpaste and puts it on there and goes over. He's brushing his teeth. And now he comes in the shower, and he's showering like this. He's going, <laughs> and his gums were on fire. <laughs> Do you realize that now that you've told this story, kids all over the country are going in with a syringe to fix the toothpaste no, up for do mom that. and dad? That, that was just, to, just for a little joke. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to do some commercials now, and uh, Sparky, you are excused just for a minute to go and pose for the TV cameras, but be sure to come back when I've finished. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, I want to remind everybody about Blackberry Julep. I don't know whether Sparky had any of that last night, but Blackberry Julep really is delicious, and it's... You know, they have cherry julep, too, and they have apricot julep. And, and these are all very good vermouth beverages that are imported by Jack Pouston Company in New York, New York. I really do recommend that you try them. Let me just give you some delicious tips on ways to use them. You've heard of Kier. Everybody orders a Kier now in the restaurant. Sounds so chic. Well, you order a blackberry julep Kier. That's uh, two parts white wine and one part blackberry julep. And it is just delicious. I like it on a rock or two ice, that is. And of course, you can always use blackberry julep with a splash of soda and a slice of lemon. Uh, you can enjoy blackberry julep and black coffee. Another very good idea is just before retiring to sip a little blackberry julep half and half with hot tea. The secret blend of herbs and roots and spices and seeds, all of that combines to make blackberry julep so good. It's imported. Blackberry julep, cherry julep, and apricot julep, wherever fine wines are sold. Pacific Bartlett growers remind you it's still time to think about fruit canning, jams, preserves, good things that you'll enjoy all winter long. And right now, it's the season for Pacific Mountain Bartlett's from Oregon, Washington, and California. Wallbaums has a fresh shipment. It arrives regularly, so you hurry on over there while these delicious pears are in their prime. And look up your favorite recipe for canning Bartlett pears. Then go on down to Wallbaums for Pacific Mountain Bartlett's. If you've waited for coats to be on sale, here's your sale. If you've waited for sofas to be on sale, here's your sale. If you've waited for something really special, ANS has your sale. The store-wide super savings spree. Find savings for yourself, your family, and your home. Like Mrs. All-Weather Rain-Resistant Pants Coats with snug acrylic pile lining. Regularly $65, now $49.90. ANS best-selling Stearns and Foster mattress and box spring. Twin size originally $135 each, now $79.95 each. Other sizes at similar savings. So rush to the ANS nearest you for ANS store-wide super saving spree, now through Saturday. Such great values, you won't leave empty-handed. Catch, catch the spirit, the spirit at ANS. The Dollhouse, 176 9th Avenue at 21st Street is New York's Dollhouse Specialist. Enchanting children and their parents for 35 years with the largest selection of accessories and miniatures in the world. Everything from a modern Swedish kitchen to a Wild West general store, all precision built to scale. 
for the serious collector or hobbyist, there is a warehouse of mini lumber and flooring and lighting supplies. The dollhouse also specializes in toys for boys and dolls and cuddly animals for children of all ages. The best news, of course, is that all fine toys at the dollhouse are at discount prices. So visit the dollhouse, a division of Manhattan Doll, Hospital, and Toy Shop at 176 9th Avenue at 21st Street. They have a second location at 181, or 181st Street and Broadway, and they take major credit cards. They're open Monday through Thursday, 11 till 7, Friday, 11 till 3, closed Saturday, open Sunday, 11 to 5. The dollhouse, memories every child should have. And now my guest, Sparky Lyle, who is talking to the crowds and being asked a lot of questions that I wish I knew what they were about his ring. So, come back, Sparky. Come back. Come back, Sparky. Come back, Sparky. Da, 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 da. He's showing off his rings, Arlene, and uh, he's not going to have much more room on his hand there may if he gets I, many you, more of those. May I see them a minute, Sparky? Well, that's that's last year's ring. We haven't got this year's ring yet. Uh, Boy. When I was up there, they were just designing it, and they wouldn't let me see it. So. I have no idea, but that's last year. New, year, uh, New York Yankees with diamonds? Oh, yeah. Uh, does every player have a yeah. ring like this? No, Everyone I'm... that was there last year has one. Really? You don't know what you're going to get this year? Well, we'll get a ring that will surpass that one, I'm sure. Audience, dear, this that's is... That's an a... American League championship ring. This year he gets the World we'll Series. get a World Championship. Oh, a World Championship ring. Uh, you just do... What do you do with this? Give this to your wife? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a woman, right, Sparky? You'll have to cut that finger off to get that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't wear a ring on both hands. Oh, you yes, I can. Oh, he's got one on both hands. <laughs> I don't believe it. That's the one from uh, Boston in 1967. We lost that year, too. <laughs> oh, they are. They're diamonds, but I, right? I probably will retire this one when I get the new one. You'll give this one with a B on it to baby, huh? <laughs> No, that'll go to uh, the box. The box. <laughs> Never to be seen again. <laughs> You're going to put that in with the award? Yes, I am. You know, uh, Sparky, everybody cares about the Cinderella story, how famous people got where they are. Could you just tell me where you came from and how you got where you are? Well, I'm from Reynoldsville, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a very, very small coal mining town. There used to be about 3,000 people there, but I think there's less than that now. We have two stoplights, <laughs> nine gas stations, and 47 bars, and I just... All of which you would have visited last night. <laughs> I would have hit every one of them last night had I been there, yes. <laughs> and uh, I, I just, uh, you know, I loved sports when I was going to school, and I, I can honestly say that, it, you know, it wasn't my ambition from the time that I could play sports to be a professional because I never felt that, uh, that I had the ability to be a professional baseball player. And, then I signed with the Baltimore Orioles, and uh, once I got that chance, I thought, well, you know, I come this far, I'm going to, you know, just see what I can do, and next thing I know, here I am. It's and terrific. I have, uh, Ted Williams helped me out a lot, too. Uh-huh. In what way did he help you? Well, he, uh, he asked me if I knew what the best pitch in baseball was, and I said, no, sir, I don't, and he told me it was a slider, which I couldn't throw, and I never heard of one. <sighs> he told me the reason that that pitch was so good is because he couldn't hit it consistently. And that was enough for me, because as far as I'm concerned, he was the best hitter ever was I in the big see. leagues. And uh, so I set out to learn how to throw a slider, and uh, he told me that if I, if I learned that pitch, I'd go to the big leagues. And uh, that following uh, summer, I his came up with a slider, was okay. and I was there the next year. He it's was a right. Perfect story. Just That's like nice. Keith. Keith knows all, sees all. <laughs> Here's all. <laughs> you know, one thing, Arlene, uh, that amazes me about Sparky is the fact that he never really has too much arm problems, you know, which pitchers today, all you do is read about it across the country. And uh, uh, how do you stay in shape, say, in the off season, like right now, till you get to spring training? Well, I don't, uh, some guys have to throw during the winter and so on. I, I never have. Uh, when the season ends, I don't pick up a ball until about March 14th. And, uh, you know, I, I don't baby my arm or anything like that. I... I, I guess you could say I abuse it more than anything, and, but it's never been sore, and I've never had any trouble with it. Uh, I think it's, you know, I, I have a different physical makeup, I think, than uh, most pitchers, but 
my arm must not hemorrhage inside after I pitch. I'm sure it does, but maybe not as much as other guys. And yeah. I don't have to use ice or anything like that. So. So, yeah, Arlene, one of the things I think a lot of the women listening that aren't real familiar with baseball would be interesting is that most pitchers rest for four days between a start. A starting pitcher like a Tom Seaver yeah. or a Don Gullett usually have four full days of rest. Sometimes Sparky comes in three nights in a row and throws, he throws hard, he throws a hard slider, and it's very unusual. The guy's arm can stand up as well as his has for a long time. I had no idea that uh, the arm hemorrhaged inside. That well, that's what makes it stiff. Yeah, that, maybe that's the wrong term to use, but that, that's what really makes your arm stiff. There's tiny, tiny blood vessels. Blood vessels there. that. Uh, and crack. that's why a lot of guys will ice their arm after the game, and uh, you know that stops that, so they're able to come back a lot quicker. Well, how many days of rest do you prefer? I don't know. I I pitch six, seven days in a row and take a day off. <laughs> That's not true. Pitch six. Do you pitch six or seven I, days in a row? I, I did this year a couple of times. Yeah, but he has. He has. <laughs> Most of the time, I, I haven't. I only had to have one day off this year. The you way know, things went. I read about, um, in asking you about your past, I read about Bobby Feller used to learn how to pitch or play with his father all the time. Did you have a family relationship that was useful to you as far as your game's concerned? Yeah, well, my, my uncle was probably the baseball player uh, in the family and my dad he played b baseball and basketball and so on but uh, I could never get him to go out back and catch me <laughs> <laughs> for two reasons number one he couldn't do it and number two he got you know I wasn't that accurate when I was throwing and he got tired of chasing the ball all the time I think that was the biggest reason. <laughs> Done. Yeah, I think another great uh, aspect of the Yankee win, it, it kind of parallels Oakland's a few years ago, and they had a lot of seeming team dissension. That probably pulled you guys together more at the end, didn't it? Well, you know, it, it's uh, it's really funny. You know, in the clubhouse before the games, uh, when this stuff was going on or whatever, I mean, I, I disregarded when I just walked away. What would go on? Can you reveal anything? A lot of people wonder what actually did go on. Well, uh, you know, any whatever you're talking about. I mean, as far as dissension, uh, arguments, so on and so forth. I I didn't know about most of them until afterwards. And uh, you know, as long as you can go out there, and you know, maybe maybe a lot of us had to be mad when they went out there. I don't know, but uh, I just don't feel that that uh, you have to do anything to pump any any major league baseball player up to go out and play in a playoffs or World Series. Uh, you can't get up for those games and you know you don't belong there so uh, regardless of what they say about you know if that helped pull us together or, or whatever I mean it, I think it's just the playoffs and the World Series that uh, that really got us going. The truth is the dissension if there was dissension the whole thing was just good for baseball because there was so much celebration around the most important franchise and the most important I mean the Mets are important just equally important when they win a World Series of course but it just helps baseball a lot to do great in New York, just like it helps basketball and the Knicks do well, or hockey when the Rangers or Islanders do. You know, Greg, Greg Nettle said a, a funny thing. Uh, they were talking about the Yankees are fighting and winning, and they asked Nettles, what do you think you have to do to beat the Dodgers? He said, just keep them from hugging. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody wrote, Red Smith wrote, Arlene, that if the Yankees win the World Series, it'll set brotherhood back to Cain and Abel. <laughs> Oh, boy, Red Smith. <laughs> you know, uh, Sparky, uh, you've been around quite a while now in the major leagues. Uh, do you look ahead like uh, what's Sparky Lyle going to do, say, uh, 10 years from now or not? No, right now I'm just worrying about living 10 more years. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going to count his <laughs> rings. After last night, this morning I wanted to die, I want to tell you. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, you know, I'm got Would you a like to be a pitching coach someday? Yeah, that, that would be nice, but uh, I wouldn't be too much on the running part of it. <laughs> you know, they, they'd be on their own there. But, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind uh, being a pitching coach. But, do, uh, we, do we have any amateur psychologists around here who can explain the calm control that is needed uh, in an anxious situation that certainly besets every pitcher? Well, I, I think that uh, the, the best thing to do when you're out there is not to care. You know, I... What? Really? Well, the, that's the best way I can put it. When I'm out there, I mean, I know what I have to do, and uh, it's if you make a mistake or you lose the game or you win the game, you've got to just say, well, okay, I won the game, or okay, I got my butt kicked, and uh, now we got to think about tomorrow. And the sooner you can get that attitude, the better pitcher you're going to be. Have you always been unflappable? Yeah, up until yesterday when I found out that <laughs> I won the Cy Young when Award. You flipped. <laughs> I flipped. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, I think that's the hardest part of uh, sports, uh, having a relief pitcher come in, Don. I think I'll agree to this. Uh, 60,000 people sitting there in the fans, yeah. millions watching on television, and here maybe bases are loaded, two men on base, and you come in there to face this batter who probably is one of the fine hitters that you're coming in at that particular moment and uh, takes an awful lot of uh, guts, I guess, and as Sparky said, the way he does it, uh, I can't quite believe that, Sparky. <laughs> but, uh, you know, with uh, some of the times you came in during the playoffs in the World Series, uh, you must feel a little twinge somewhere along the line. Well, I'll be very honest with you, I, I never have. And uh, even during the playoff game there, when I pitched those uh, five whatever innings, I I was pitching that game like I would have any other regular season game because I, you know I don't feel, I know that you're playing. There's more at stake at that time, but uh, I just get in my head that you know I'm still playing the same team, the same hitters, and they're not you know. They're not gods coming up to the plate because we're in the playoffs, and uh, so I just went ahead and pitched them like I would ordinarily in the season, like we had 10 or 20 more games to play. I mean, that's you know that's the way I do it. <laughs> now, how, how many other players feel that way? None. <laughs> None. You're the only I, I don't cool know. one in the crowd. I don't, well, I don't know that. They might think I'm all wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I tell you, you saw the converse of that with the Kansas City Royals. Those guys were yeah. tight coming in that last game. They yeah. were tight. Yeah. It's it's just ironic that they had to lose it in the ninth inning again. You know, it's. Uh, I I know really how they felt. The picture of Freddie Paytek sitting on the bench there with his head in his hands. That's got to be. Uh, you know, if that would happen to me. Uh, I would have probably been there too, you know. Yeah. And then I would have got up and said, "Oh, I, I'm on live radio." I can't. Yeah. <laughs> you're, it's a family program. Um, but uh, what happens when you're sitting in that bullpen or for a long time waiting? Oh, well, I've. Don't you know, get any I've, butterflies or anything? Oh yeah, I, I'm. A, I got to the point now where I can uh, snap anything out of the air with a towel. <laughs> Oh, there's great things happen in the bullpen. Oh, yeah. Joe Pignatano, the Mets right. uh, coach yes. out in the bullpen, he raised beautiful <laughs> tomatoes out of Shea and <laughs> grounds, yeah, the grounds yeah. ripped them off on him. You know, it's funny that you say that because when we were in shape when uh, Yankee Stadium was being uh, redone, uh, I used to burn all the slugs that got on his plants all the time, so I helped him out a little bit. We used to, boy, those are monster things. Right? Hold it, fellas, for a minute here. Sparky Lyle, Don Cookie, Keith Morris. I have some messages from my sponsors. Good news for all of you busy women out there, women who want to make meal planning easier and quicker. And I'm talking about Shofar, Kosher, Franks, and Salami. Kosher is better and Shofar is best. Best because they use only prime cuts of U.S. inspected kosher beef. There's no artificial coloring, no additives, no fillers. Shofar is famous for their more meat, less fat kosher frankfurters and kosher salami. And of course, the meals that you can fix are so cool for a taste of Austria cheese. You just go to your local supermarket or deli and look for the Twin Peaks of the Mount Austria cheese. Mount Austria brand cheeses are nature made. They're not machine made. There's no artificial coloring there. No artificial flavoring thanks to their all grass diet. That's made Austrian cows world famous for the high quality of their milk and therefore the purity of Austrian cheese. Austrian cheese has a high nutritional value but it doesn't have a high fat content and it has a price that's surprisingly popular for an imported cheese. So look for the Twin Peaks of Mount Austria. It's the brand that's making America hungry. And speaking of people being hungry, they have a very good recipe book. It is free, naturally, featuring snacks, dinners, and party dishes. Write to this station for your copy of the Mount Austria recipe book the next time you are out shopping, and then look for the Twin Peaks of Mount Austria label. Hello, Arlene. This is Sherry. Arlene, the borough president's job pays about $45,000 a year, but there are two men each spending $1 million trying to get it. Bob Wagner, Jr. and Andrew Stein, both of them sons of famous political New Yorkers. They're battling it out at every opportunity, and we're going to give them a dilly of a chance. A debate in Grand Central Terminal in front of the eyes and ears of New York on the heart of New York. WOR Radio. We'll be there after the news at 2. It's heaven on earth for He-Man. Yes, if you're a bigger, tall-sized man, like the man across from me, there's more of you. Because there's more of you, you need the store that gives you more, and that's He-Man. The He-Man shops give you more, more fashion, more selection, more true value than you ever dreamed possible. 
and that's because He-Man shops specialize in fitting big and tall sizes to perfection. At He-Man, you'll find all the important designer names in clothing, sportswear, outerwear, furnishings, shoes, and accessories. Names such as Hardy Amy's, Henri Picard, Gino Pacelli, Emmett Bruce, Lavin, Texacan. Now's the time to get your full ward wardrobe, and He-Man is ready to fit you out all the special sizes are taken care of at He-Man, the store that gives you more. Convenient locations in Huntington, Paramus, Forest Hills, Scarsdale, Yonkers, Brooklyn, East Brunswick, and now in Norwalk, Connecticut at 330 Westport Avenue. Remember, you're not in a He-Man shop unless it says so. Well, at the turn of the century, the Grossinger family arrived in the New World with their old family recipe for rye bread, which has since delighted guests at Grossinger's Catskill Resort as well as the general public, almost half a billion loaves of Grossinger's bread have been consumed by satisfied customers. And the bakers of Grossinger's allow no compromise. They use only the finest pure kosher ingredients, the highest protein flour available, the only nature's healthful artisan well water is used in Grossinger's bread. No city water, chemical preservatives, and no cholesterol. No, no, those are all no-nos. Baked longer than ordinary rise in an open hearth oven, the bottom is coated with fresh cornmeal for that unique toasted flavor. Grossing as rye bread with seeds or without from the people that you can bank on to bake the best. And this week only, grossing as rye and pumpernickel breads are featured at 10 cents off the regular price at participating New York food stores. And there is also a 10 cents off coupon for Vlasic pickles on each loaf of grossing as no seed rye. And now back to my guests, the gentleman that has won the Cy Young Award in baseball the only relief pitcher in the American League to have won it, Sparky Lyle. And with me, of course, is Don Crickey, our sportscaster, and Keith Morris of Sports Illustrated magazine. I don't know what, uh, what baseball things would be most interesting to an audience, but I'm sure both of you do, or even Sparky, Don knows. Well, I think a great thing, uh, you, a guy like Sparky paid his dues a long time before he got to the big leagues. A lot of guys make the jump right out of college now, some of them do, not a whole lot, but he was in places like Fox Cities, Pittsfield, Mass, Bloomfield in the Appalachian League. That's a long way from New York City with a World Series ring on your hand. Yeah, it is a long way. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here, too, instead of there. <laughs> <laughs> now, when does, a, when does a scout or whoever touch you for the big leagues? Well, I'll tell you, when uh, George Stoller is a man that signed me, he was a scout of the Baltimore Orioles, and the day he saw me pitch, I think I struck out 21, but I walked 13 or something like that. I mean, it was a ridiculous game. And I ended up losing the game and everything. And, and uh, he had called, and he, he just told my dad, he says, I, you know, I, I want to come down and sign your boy for to a pro contract. And dad says, yeah, OK. And I didn't believe him. You know, The next night when he was supposed to be there, I was down at the ball field <laughs> playing ball. I didn't think he was coming at all, you know. You couldn't I, believe the good no, news. No, no. <laughs> so then when he came in and uh, he showed us the contract. <clears throat> My dad said, well, we'd like to have a bonus, you know, and, and I said, no, we don't. I said, we'll just sign this and I'll get out of here. <laughs> That's what I said to him. You know, little did I know that, you know, he was prepared to offer some sum of money, but I never give him a chance. And so I signed for absolutely nothing. And you I left the next the day. You must be the only ball player in the world that has that record. I don't know. I didn't even get the pen. <laughs> you know, uh, Albert Lyle sounds more like a lawyer than, you know, a, a baseball pitcher. But uh, Sparky, uh, where did you get the nickname Sparky? Uh, my dad and mother thought they were going to have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> they had the name picked out ahead of time. <laughs> oh, I hope they were too disappointed. That's a piece of uh, baseball trivia. What is Sparky Lyle's real first name? What is it, Albert? Albert. Albert, Albert yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I'll bet uh, you ball players don't get to see the inside of a train station very often. Most of you fly, don't you, all well, the time? I'll, I'll tell you, to be honest with you, the first uh, time I visited New York City with the Red Sox, this is the first place that I was... Grand Central to, Terminal? Uh, that's right. Uh, that's how long there. ago? Uh, 11 years ago, almost. The old place hasn't <laughs> changed much since well, then. It changed a bit. <laughs> but can anyone recall the problems when certain... Ball, uh, ball players had to fly for the first time and hated the idea? No? Well, I, there's some of them. <laughs> the only guy that it I ever be. knew was Gary Geiger. He played for the Red Sox. He just 
He was, he was afraid to fly. I'll tell you, he was really afraid. And I know that when he used to come to New York, he used to take the train. He'd take a train any time he could. Yeah. And that, that is terrible, because the way the traveling is today and everything, it's... Uh, they can't make connections. Oh, well, not only that, but it's it's too hard to play, you know. And I know we were flying one night, and the engine backfired, and I thought, I thought, hell, Rod Henry's is going to just die right there. <laughs> you know, it, it just made a real big boom, and he was sitting right back there by it, and that was it. <laughs> Actually, flying is a lot safer than walking, really, when you look at statistics. <laughs> yeah. You take a shower in your home every day. I have a slight association with TWA, so I'm... What? A little bit up <laughs> on the statistics. But actually, if you take a shower in your home every day, Arlene, and somebody else flies a major airline like TWA between major cities every day, the chance of anything happening to you, serious injury like you unfortunately had on the stage, are 16,000 times as great taking a shower in your home every day. So it's better to fly than shower is what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or else shower while you fly, whatever. You know, Sparky, the one person we've left out of our conversation this morning is the umpire. You know, uh, the baseball player's best friend. Uh, oh, yeah. You get along with him well, don't you? Yeah. I, I've, never, uh, I've never argued with an umpire. Never, never have? Is that right? No. Nope, never But what have. about the rhubarbs I see every once yeah, in a while? Yeah, but I'm never involved in them. <laughs> you keep away I, from those? Well, I don't, uh, you know, it's it's a tough job back there, and especially playoffs and uh, World Series. And, you know, I, I realize, you know, there's been a lot of times maybe I'll, you know, I'll throw a pitch 1-2, and 0-2 oh and two or whatever, 3-2, and two, and it's a strike, and, and I know it's a strike, and the umpire misses it. And, you know, I mean, they miss pitches, and but it's not going to help you to argue about it because they, you know, they cannot... You know, they can't change your decision anyhow, and, and all you do is make them mad at you to where possibly, you know, if it's just human nature that if uh, you get mad at, at the pitcher out there because he's trying to show you up or the catcher screaming at him or, or whatever, now if you throw one and you miss by that much, it, you know, it could go either way. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's never going to go for you. So I just stay out there, and uh, I think maybe twice in my whole career I'll – I threw pitches that uh, I knew were strikes, and uh, I just turned around and and I didn't let the catcher throw the ball back to me. You know, I just stood there with my back to him, and uh, that that way the umpire knows that that I'm you're out not there exactly going, happy. Yeah, I'm saying, oh darn it, and all that, <laughs> and uh, so he knows, and I don't show him up, and you know, th so things are all right that way. But um, do any of the rule bobs ever get terribly serious, where anybody gets really in a terrible fight? Well, do you remember any? You can probably hear the greatest combination of cuss words in your whole life if you could ever hear it. I mean, I I don't know. I, I've heard a couple of them when I've been on the mound, uh, when the managers and umpire have gotten yeah. into it against each other, and, you know, I, I don't even know where they're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> Martin can hang with them, can he? Oh, he can. He, I, the, the best I've ever heard has been Dick Williams, though. He was the all-time. Really? Like, oh. I mean, the umpires hated to come out there. <laughs> Uh, you know, and you know how they take too much time sometimes, and, and the umpire's got to come out and tell yeah. you. Well, they just hated to come out there. But they knew as soon as they got within striking distance, he was going to nail them. <laughs> you couldn't believe the, the combinations of words they put together. Yeah, that's right. I'm telling it's you. Never, it's, it's never a sentence that has a subject and a predicate, is it? Well, it has a lot of expletives and uh, <laughs> kind of interspersed. <laughs> never ending. Well, now for some more commercials. We've already done Sports Illustrated, TWA, Cy Young, and now Cremora. Have you tried Cremora? It really does give me that smooth, good taste that you should have. It enhances the natural good flavor right from the very first taste. And it comes to less than one cent per level teaspoon. Cremora gives you really a special added delight in your coffee in preparing for parties and small gatherings you can mix a special treat, Cafe Jamaica, that's a special blend of coffee and rum, or Cafe Apricot. Very easy to make because they all start with a touch of Cremora. The details are on the inside of the Cremora label. Cremora also gives the satisfaction of knowing it's only 12 calories per level teaspoon. Cremora stores very easily without refrigeration, and that is especially convenient. Cremora non-dairy crema from Borden. Wanted. People interested in King's, Queen's, or Long Island classified ads. Contact the Daily News. For sale, a way to reach classified buyers and sellers in King's, Queen's, or Long Island. Call the Daily News. Bargain, the best classified ad deal in King's, Queen's, or Long Island. Call the Daily News. Whether you're looking to sell or buy something, you can't beat classified action ads in the Daily News. Action ads get action.
And they're at a price people can afford. Two lines for three days for just $6. And there's no waste. Your action ad will appear either in Kings, Queens, or Long Island. For cars, furniture, appliances, odds and ends, you name it. Get action with Daily News Action Ads. Call 949-2000 today. Remember, two times three is six. Two lines for three days for only six dollars. Get action with Daily News Action Ads. 949-2000 for action. Now, there's a lot of formula numbers that you hear all the time. There's only one formula number I'd like you to remember, and that's Formula 405. That is that terrific new beauty treatment preparation developed by Dr. Frank Panzarella. He's the well-known skin biochemist, and he created the original Deep Action Formula 405 moisturizer, but it's the new one I want to remind you about. It's 405 Light Textured Moisturizer. Silky, completely non-greasy cream that works invisibly. You just glide it over clean skin, and in seconds it sinks right in and it disappears. You can wear it all day. Under makeup, hardly know it's there. Formula 405 Light Textured Moisturizer. It has exclusive moisturizing agents. And of course, moisture retention is the proper way to achieve moisture balance. And that helps to restore and to maintain your skin's fresh and vibrant look. So use Dr. Panzarella's Formula 405. You'll see really an amazing difference in no time. It comes in a black and silver jar, 405 light textured moisturizer. And incidentally, here is a nice suggestion for the lovers of pretty music, jazz music. The pianist Randy Weston is going to be doing a concert this Sunday up on 90th Street and 5th Avenue. That's the Church of the Heavenly Rest to benefit their day school. And among the accompanying musicians will be Randy's son, Azadin. The music starts at 5, and the address, once again, the Church of the Heavenly Rest, 90th Street and 5th Avenue. And now back to my guests, Sparky Lyle and Don Crickey and Keith Morris, three whirlwind fellows I have with me this morning. Now that you have a rest period, where do you rest? I never rest. <laughs> <laughs> what is it you do when you don't rest, then? Uh, what do you do? You what said is this is a family show, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got a lot of excess energy, Arlene. Uh, no, Sparky feels that he, you know, he likes to go places and do a lot of things, and uh, uh, that's what keeps him young. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've been uh, riding around, taking a lot of pictures, going antiquing, stuff like that. You're a camera buff, aren't you? Yeah. yeah that's, and, uh, and putting the old car together again. And yeah, the old car's got a dead battery now. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, uh, are you refurnishing a new home since you've been married? No, we, we bought a new house, and it's, we've been in there almost a year now, and we got it pretty much like we want it right now. So uh, you know, that's, that was the nice part of it, it living out in Jersey this summer. You know, that was, I enjoyed that very much. And what about the antiquing thing? What is that? Uh, Do we're you just know something about antiquing? Not a little bit, but uh, not not that much. We just started, but we're kind of interested in old trunks and stuff like that. So uh, I think the reason why she went, no, I think she's got that for me. She's going to fire me in the trunk or something one of these days. Oh, please. I don't know. <laughs> You're crazy about each other, though, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, where did you meet? Uh, Up in the air, I think. Yeah. What? On a, on a street corner. No. She was a lady of the evening. No. <laughs> She's a former airline stewardess, uh, no, Arlene. I'm, I'm only teasing. I'm only teasing. <laughs> now, we, we met on a blind date, really. Did you? Yeah. I once did a program called Blind Date. Well. Which I, I, I matched boys <laughs> and girls. <laughs> we got a pretty good matchup, I'll tell you. <laughs> did you meet her when you were flying? No, I... I, I don't mean that in any unattractive <laughs> I, I way. I promise I won't say another word. I was only two. <laughs> I forgot this was a family. Hour. <laughs> well, no. when do you go back to work again? Um, probably about March 14th. I usually show up a little later <laughs> than anybody else. I don't need as much spring training as everybody, so... You know, they go down about... You're not saying that because you're cocky. You're saying it because no, you literally I, don't. I've, I've showed up the same time every year, and... Uh, you know, I, I just, I don't need as much as everybody, and so all I do is waste my time down there in Florida, so everybody signs goes. signs his contract and walks right out on the pitcher's mound. Yeah, uh -huh. usually. Yeah. Did you grow your mustache for a specific reason? Does it help you when you play? Is it a windbreaker? No, it makes my nose look smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Come 
on, you baseball <laughs> addict. Get me over this trouble I'm in. That's the real reason. Yeah. I think your nose is adorable. See, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sparky, you know, one thing, uh, we've been talking baseball all morning here. What other sports do you really like to watch, you know? Uh, I, I enjoy watching almost anything, Keith. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not one of these guys that sits in front of the television all the time watching uh, football and right. baseball and so on. I watched the uh, Super Bowl and usually the basketball playoffs, but normally I don't. Well, normally, I watch enough games. <laughs> normally we're not lucky enough to have Sparky Lyle with us, and we're very grateful. Thank you, Keith Morris and Don Crickey, and this is WMR, the heart of New York.